After a loss to Houston yesterday, Andrew Luck and the Colts fall one game behind both the Texans and the Titans in the AFC South. Houston and Tennessee face each other the last week of the regular season. Max, yep. who's going to win it? The AFC South. The Titans are going to win the AFC South, and I was disappointed in Andrew Luck yesterday because I thought that he'd have those key moments where he'd win games like that, have good enough stats by the end of the season, get his team to the playoffs, and maybe win the MVP, actually, like coming from behind. But that was the kind of game he needed to make those plays. He didn't. I think the Titans have the best shot to do it. Oh, so does that mean that uh, my Andrew Luck's not going to be your MVP, Max Kellerman? Correct. Okay, I'm, ha- I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I agree with Max. I'm rolling with the Titans. DeMarco Murray is running the football well, and Mariota's only got eight interceptions on the season. He looks pretty damn good. We've given, been giving Jameis Winston some props. we got to give Marcus Mariota some props. No question. Let's look at the NFC South now, guys. The Bucks knocked off the Saints for their fifth straight win and remain in first place with the Falcons at 8-5. and five. Max, do you think the Bucks are going to win this division? I do. I do. I think that their defense is really coming around. They kind of remind me of the Giants right now, actually. Defense gelling at the right time, and they got a money quarterback. You know, there's something about Jameis Winston. Has that Ben Roethlisberger thing. Big, just athletic enough, big arm, leader. Guys like to play with him, comes through in the clutch. I like the Bucks. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. Even though I've been very impressed by the Bucks and their defensive style, there's no question about it. Offensively, I'm wondering what Tampa's going to do. I don't have any questions about Atlanta's offense. When I think about their schedule, San Francisco, that's damn near a bye week. Carolina on the road, that'll be tough. But they have New Orleans at home to close out the season. I'm just of the mindset that, that you know, Atlanta's going to win their final three games, and I think they'll be able to hold on for the division crown. Both have a shot coming up, my favorite part of the show. When we return... It's, it's all just football. Everything football to me, you know what I'm saying? So uh, it, was a, it was a run play, and, and me and Chris was, was looking at one another in the face, and I cut block. I mean, it's not like he didn't see me. He was looking right at me. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, they got upset with it, but... If they watch film and they watch me play, they know that's what I do. That's if they watch film, though. Totally but clean play by you. It wasn't, a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a dirty play. It was a dirty play by a sorry player. He don't do nothing. He come to the game, don't catch no passes. He come to the game to chop guys from the back. And he got the same agent as me. So when I see his ass in Atlanta, I'm going to beat his ass. That's how you really feel. Stephen A., you think it was a dirty hit? It absolutely was a dirty hit. I don't care what anybody says. I don't give a damn what the rule book says mm-hmm. or anything like that. Akeem Tlaib is absolutely right in terms of it calling a dirty play. And here's why I would say that to Harry Douglas. I don't know Harry Douglas personally. Uh, he's been in the NFL for, for about seven or eight years. He's on his grind. He went to college at U- Louisville. You're 32 years old. You're a grown man. Don't talk to me about rules and what rules allow. You sit up there and you got a cornerback, a contemporary within the National Football League. Y'all are away from the play and you literally dive at his knee. That is not something that you do. I don't give a damn what the rule book says. You know as a human being there's certain things that you don't do if you don't have to do it. You weren't in a tussle. You weren't in a melee. You weren't in a, in a, in a pile, a scrum. It was just you and him. He's away from the play. He's not anticipating anything. And you dove right at his right knee. That is a dirty play. It is unethical. And as far as I'm concerned, I want to see what the National Football League max is going to do because I think that Harry Douglas should be suspended immediately for at least a game. And he should have himself docked a game's pay not to just mention that it's also important that the nfl does that because the nfl would certainly not hesitate to find somebody or suspend somebody if something like that harmed the players according to what they they're concerned about if they're protecting themselves about uh law potential lawsuits with concussions and beyond look at what they've turned the game into look at what they have folks watching out for they're encouraging individuals to be hit low because you want to avoid high hits at all times so if you really really care about player safety don't just come to me with the head uh, head shots come to me addressing cheap shots like that because it was a cheap shot the only last thing I'd like to say is to keep the lead, be cool. Because even though you're right, the fact of the matter is you don't need to be threatening to beat as you know what when you catch him in Atlanta. Anything that goes down between y'all from this point forward in a physical level that's off the field, I'm automatically going to blame Akeem Tlaib. Why? Because you just went and publicly threatened the man. You don't have to do that. Be cool. It ain't worth it. Chill out. Just relax. 
but Harry Douglas deserves to be fined, and as far as I'm concerned, he should be suspended for one game for that hit. That was a cheap shot. It was Bush League. I don't give a damn what the rule book says. That was a cheap shot. It was Bush League, and he should be suspended. Well, we agree that it was dirty for those reasons. It was, um, it was malicious, and it was unnecessary. It was, uh, it was gratuitous. It was superfluous. So we agree um, that it's dirty, but it's not illegal. You can't find him. You can't suspend him. And it's fair for a player to say, look, football is a hurt game. The way I view it is if I have a chance to damage the other team's asset, one of their resources within the rules, I'm going to do it. It's one of the reasons I didn't have a problem with Bounty Gate, and I didn't think there should have been punishment for it. Um, it does matter that it's in the rules or not in the rules. Not morally. I, I disagree with you saying ethically. I think, and not to split hairs here, but I suppose we have to. There's a difference between ethics and morals if you really do want to split those hairs. Morally is what's right and wrong based on empathy. Let me put myself in that person's shoes and see if I'd want that done to me. Come on, it didn't really affect the play. You didn't have to do that. But ethics is about a standard of behavior based on rules. And the rules in this full contact sport protect him here. The, it, Chris Harris was pursuing a runner, was running away from his own goal line, was not being blocked by anyone else. So it was a legal block by the rule book. And I don't see how you can fine or suspend a player for a legal block. Now we agree it was messed up. I mean, it wasn't a chop block by definition, but it was messed up because he meant to injure. Part of, but, but you know, again, that could, so, so therefore it was mean spirit, it, it was malicious. But one can approach the game of football from the point of view that you can play it with malice, that you can look to injure the other player if it's within the rules, that that gives you an advantage. After all, when you're going now, now you and I both agree you're trying to mess with a guy's career. That's messed up. But you know, Lawrence Taylor used to put his that shoulder down and crack the guy in the small of the back, the quarterback. What do you think was on his mind? Probably severing the guy's back from the rest of his body. That's the nature of the game. If it's within the rules, maybe messed up, but it's actually not unethical by definition, and I don't see how you fine or suspend him. Well, I'll tell you how. I'll help you see it. Um, when a quarterback gets hit low, that play is supposed to be definitively wrong, and you get fined or you get suspended or whatever the case may be. But on several occasions, we've noticed instances where intent comes into the equation. Now, obviously, it's very subjective, it's very arbitrary, and we understand that. But someone's intent matters no matter the malice that comes associated with a particular sport, Max. So what I'm saying is this. Again, if you were in a scrum and that's what you decided to do, that's what comes with the territory because you're Chris Harris Jr. You got to watch yourself. You're in the middle of that. You are away from the play. Y'all are jogging at, 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 at you know, at, it was in, messed at that up. very slow place. So what I, I know, I know you agree that it was messed up. But what I'm saying is, is that that elevates the intent portion of this conversation. Well, what I'm saying because is when we look at a Chris, when we look at a Harry Douglas, and we could see so easily that because he was away from the play, his intent was of malice, and the NFL says that they care about player safety. You can adjust and modify your rules to some degree in a particular instance to say, excuse me, we know that's the rule, but you were clearly dirty in that one. You're going to pay a price for that. I think they could, the they could do that. The defense could be, yes, I'm trying to hurt him. This is football, and I'm allowed to try to hurt someone within the rules. And they're That's allowed, the point. They, but they could subjectively decide that your malice intent is of such a nature that we need to address it so we can discourage other individuals well, from following suit and doing the same so thing. Let me, so, but, but, no, at, not, not, in retro, not retroactively. They can do that. That's not yes, fair. They can't. It's not it fair be to do fair. it retroactively. Well, it wasn't fair to do what he did, but Are he you did suggesting, it. So, so the NFL should legislate that in a full contact sport, they even, already if do. You do some, even if you do something they already with, do. within the confines of the rules, if we determine... That, uh, are we now living in a world where in the NFL it's not okay yes. to try to hurt your opponent? Well, yeah. Well, well Max, you you trying to tell me you sit up here and you haven't questioned some of the rulings on the other part of the NFL considering not, the violent sport? You haven't questioned yet, anything? Yes, but that's from a misapplication of the oh, rules or it. my stop. belief Guys, that a rule should be changed, up. not retroactively Max. punishing a guy for playing within the rules. Max, hold that thought. Let's get a former player. We got Ryan Clark in the house here. Your thoughts on this? Well, Everybody's right. It's with it's within the rules, right? So legally, you can do that. I've been in competition committee meetings 
probably the last three or four years, and this has come up. And it's something I've tried to get out of football. Uh, we remember back to... First, let me ask you, was it dirty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's not the... But even though that's the question, that's not the point. Okay. Right. So there's two different things. The question is, was it dirty? It was dirty. Right. And that's why it was handled the way it was handled. If I'm the pro producer of that game, if I'm in charge of the cameras, I follow Harry Douglas on the next play because when it happened, when he cut Chris Harris, I said to myself, they're going to fight in the next play because that's what I would have did. If I was Chris Harris and I wasn't hurt, I would have fought him on that play. Because I went, went to every competition committee meeting and said, you guys have to stop this. You remember back to Eric Berry when he got his injury, he was cut downfield. The, the problem with this play is, is though it's within the rules, it's unnecessary, right? They're away from the ball. Mm -hmm. Both guys are jogging. You can see him set it up too, stand up tall, high, and then shoot his kneecap. So I try to never speak to intent. But looking at this play, there's only one way to read it. You weren't trying to make a play to allow your runner to advance because Chris Harris wasn't moving toward him. The, the problem is this block is legal. He hit him. He was in front of him when he hit him. It's a legal cut block. It's not one, a chop. I have one question for you. There's nothing we can do retroactively. I, I, see, I, I, I do believe there's something you can do. Why? Because the NFL has religiously gone about the business of reviewing plays and then reaching a decision. Half the time, I wouldn't say half the time, but a lot more often than not, play rulings that you find as a former player highly questionable. Right. So what I'm saying to you is that couple that, Ryan Clark, and I'm asking the question here. Definitely. Couple that with this. As a guy, competition committee, I'm a players union, you're, in, you, you're very much entrenched in all of this. Have you not found yourself in situations where you look at the NFL and they say, okay, this is according to the rule, this is legal, but the NFL has still made a, a ruling that you deem relatively questionable. Yes, definitely. But the one thing that the NFL always has when they make those rulings is an explanation within the rules. Okay. So what I'm saying is if they decided to look at this and say, okay, we want to find him, find him, it was a malicious intent, we don't, we don't like the way it works. Same works. league that it talks about against, safety, though. It goes against Same league that safety. talks about safety. There, there is nowhere in the rule book other than saying, we think you had malicious intent and it was unnecessary right. and we're finding you. That's all I'm so, saying. So now, what, That's what I'm so saying. So when that happens, when that happens, even though D. Smith and the Players Association will all say we want Chris Harris Jr. to be healthy. We want the game to be played fairly. They're going to have to defend him. They're going to have to appeal it because yes. within the rules but negotiated go that by the CBA, but you can't. But let him go through that process of having to defend himself so but you can discourage other individuals right. because they may thing. fear losing their money. Right, but now but now we double talk ourselves okay. because we get upset as a union whenever they do this and sure. we feel like we're right. Right, we feel like it's not within the rules. The, the CBA doesn't state it. We right. negotiated one thing right. and then go away from it here. We can't do it. All right, okay. we got a lot more to get into on first take and with this man. Good to see you, Ryan Clark.